Wow, so I literally just get home from a really cool signing with the Roadrunners, and I got this really neato Valentine's Day card, really cheesy. Uh, I got it signed by all the Roadrunners, all that fun stuff. I come home, and Kevin Shattenkirk is traded. Okay, so let's just start off right there. Let's just jump right into this. Um, I am sort of, you know, I've always been sort of involved in the Kevin Shattenkirk talks, and I've always been really interested in it because for a while I thought, hey, you know what, Arizona needs a defenseman. Yes, everything goes back to Arizona for me. They need a defenseman, maybe we get Shattenkirk. And overall, just living in a Blackhawks household, you always sort of have your nose in St. Louis's business. Now, Shattenkirk has obviously always been a very big to topic of conversation because he's a very good, you know, he's good defensively, he's good offensively. And so finally, after all these trade talks, after, you know, the past few years, he's finally traded and he is going to the Washington Capitals to be reunited with his former teammate, TJ Oshie, which that actually just came to my attention because I saw somebody tweeted it out on Twitter and I actually never even thought about it. I honestly just thought Kevin Chattenkirk's traded. That was the first thing that came to my mind. So unlike the Kings getting the Kings getting Ben Bishop, yesterday and how I was really kind of surprised and shocked at that. This, I'm not surprised at all about the moving of Shattenkirk, and I can't say I am too surprised about the Washington Capitals getting him. Honestly, besides Brooks Orpik and Matt Niskanen, I don't really know anybody else on the back end of Washington, and I really think that's a problem. And I only know Brooks Orpik and Matt Niskanen because they left Pittsburgh for huge money and they haven't really done anything since they've gotten that huge money. I mean, what Brooks Orpik got in his first fight in like 10 years the other night, but I think that's pretty much it. Kevin Shattenkirk is second in points on the St. Louis Blues right now, and he currently has 10 more points than the top scoring defenseman for the Washington Capitals, which is Matt Niskanen, which again, that really says a lot about the back end in Washington. Now, maybe that's just me personally going after Matt Niskanen, but I really think, you know, if there was anything that Washington needed to do to be playoff ready, it's, you know changing up that back end, because they've had some pretty good offense up front. I mean, we've seen them light up the scoreboard plenty of times this this year, and while Ovechkin hasn't been, you know, quite the scoring phenomenon as he usually is, I would say, uh, he, I mean, he's still definitely doing good, and the people around him are doing very well. I mean, like, their top five guys, pardon me while I look up the stats of the Washington Capitals, I mean, they're per top six players are all forwards and it's you know Ovechkin isn't even first in points so I think that's really neato that you know you're getting scoring from multiple different guys which I think when you look back on it that's the way you win a Stanley Cup I mean depth scoring we saw it in Pittsburgh last year I mean we sort of saw it with San Jose as well because I personally saw it a lot I followed San Jose a lot you saw Melker Carlson score some big goals um you had Don Scoy sc score some big goals so your depth guys are definitely going to add to that. And, well, granted, these guys that are scoring for Washington are big names like Backstrom, Kuznetsov, Oshi. You're still getting more goals than just from your Alex Ovechkin, which is sort of the story we've been used to in the previous years. So what I'm trying to say is that Kevin Shattenkirk is going to be pretty much a perfect, you know, fit for what the Washington Capitals need because he's going to provide scoring which, I mean, they already have a lot of scoring, but that's going to be great, and provide more defense, so their stellar Braden Holtby doesn't have to work as hard. Because while we all like to see Braden Holtby work really hard to make fantastic saves, not sure the Capitals would really want to see that when they can much rather see themselves winning a Stanley Cup, which, you know, honestly, I don't think that would actually be too bad of a thing to see this year. I think it Ovechkin and a lot of those guys have really come a long way, and they've worked very hard. And granted, they've choked a lot in the past. I think this might be their year. And Shattenkirk, I mean, yes, Shattenkirk, I think, is the key to their victory this year. So while I believe that the Washington Capitals obviously won this trade, I don't think St. Louis should be too bummed out about what they got. Yes, they got some picks, but I'm not going to worry about picks because with the draft classes that are coming up, that it's so hard to predict anything at this rate because... The draft classes in the next few years, or at least next year, is just isn't going to be the same as it has been the past two years. And personally, just not going to dwell into that. Don't know the value of draft picks all that much because, honestly, you could get a 16th pick and it could be worth a lot more than like a fourth pick, depending on how you pick and like how smart you are as a club. 
and who's available at the time, all that fun stuff. So let's just focus on the player that they got, which was Zach Sanford, which he actually used to play at Boston College, which is very exciting for me. I always have a very good opinion on BC boys. Uh, pretty funny that we actually traded a former Boston University Terrier for a Boston College Eagle, which eh, I don't know if that was actually planned out, but pretty neat old fun fact right there. It's my Pierre Maguire fact, my really yeah odd fact about where guys used to play. That's my forte. So, Zach Sanford, uh, what do you need to know about him? He is a center and a left wing. He's by his point total, I wouldn't say he's actually that bad of a player. I would say he's pretty good. In his years with Boston College, he actually got 24 points and 39 points, respectively. Really not bad. Well, granted, BC is a very good school and has a lot of great guys. You still have to be a good player to put points on the board. So I would not say he's a bad college player or a bad player by any means. And given just, you know, the St. Louis roster, I think... This guy is going to be a really great addition for them because I think after they lost Bacchus, they've sort of had a gap there where Bacchus used to be ever since. I mean, right now their leading scorer is Tarasenko and, you know, their second scorer is Shattenkirk and he is over 10 points behind him. And from there, it just keeps falling. You have Steen, you have Schwartz, you have Stassny. The point totals are not stellar. So definitely St. Louis needs more scoring up front. They also kind of need some stability in net, but we're not going to talk about that. Yes, they are getting something, I think, really great out of this trade. And, I don't know, maybe in the future years he will have very good chemistry with another prospect in the St. Louis organization, Tage Thompson. I'm a big fan of Tage Thompson. I think he's a very good player. He's a big guy. I think he's like 6'5 or so. Really good player. Has some really sweet hands. Watched him in the World Juniors. Really great kid, so I think the addition of Zach Sanford is not entirely that bad. Well, yes, as I said before, Washington won this trade. I think there are still plenty of things for St. Louis to look forward to. Whew, I mean, after this trade, all I can say is I feel like trade deadline day might actually be really exciting this year, and it'll be really insane. While, you know, Shattenkirk was one of the biggest like possible guys on the market, he was going to be one of the biggest acquisitions of the trade deadline, and he actually went before it. I still think there are going to be some very exciting trades to happen from now until, well, I guess it's Wednesday is the trade deadline day. So we will see what happens that day. Uh, I think it's probably going to be a pretty bumping day. Uh, Landeskog might get traded, Duchesne, not sure where they might be going. I'm hearing rumors floating around about Zdeno Chara. Yeah, nuts. A lot of stuff is going on. Try and keep you guys updated. There are a few trades that I've missed out on. Um, Martin Hansel trade, for example. Uh, there were just a few more. I'm thinking about covering those. I might just compile them into one video. Really want to look at all the trades and sort of address them and see what's going on. But ooh, we got to buckle down for the next two days.